Vroom, vroom, beep, beep, motherfuckers. We're going on tour. <laughs> Trusty hogs are going on the road. Road hogs is coming to you, provided that you live very specifically in Manchester, Brighton, Edinburgh, Bristol, no, Dublin, Dublin, Bristol, Leicester, or London. London. So, get your tickets, <laughs> <laughs> and we'll see you there. Trustyhogs.com, is it? Yes. Vroom, <laughs> vroom, beep, beep, motherfucker. I will not apologize. <laughs> Hello, it's episode 117 of Trusty Hogs, and theoretically, Helen Bauer is currently sprawled on a beach in Mexico, about which I'm fucking furious. Don't Buenos. talk, I'm still talking. And we are going to pretend like it's not something that we pre-recorded, and yet it is. So here's the thing, she's in Mexico. Buenos dias. whale. Of a time. And I am not. I'm in cold fucking London with you. So I just want you to know I'm on your team. I see you. I hope you're okay. Now holiday vibes. In you come. Buenos dias. Como estas? Muy bien. <laughs> um, yo, yo soy un uh, okay. hombre. Through the fog. Step forth the trusty hogs. Yeah. You're gonna give them your problems. And they will solve them. Maybe they won't, and that's your problem. They'll have guests, and Andrew White on the tech. Oh, it's Helen and Catherine as the trusty hogs. Trust the trusty hogs, or maybe not. You're on holiday you right now. I'm I so can jealous. Be. I'm so jealous. I'll bet you're going to be having the best time. Honestly. Have you made lots of plans for it? Yes. Oh. I actually... Like, you know when you, like, make busy work where you've actually got work to do, but you're just like, I'm going to create these jobs. Your whole life is busy work. Why did I ask you that? Yeah, I was like, um, <laughs> yes. I need to colour code or nothing will ever happen. This morning uh, I made a grid of my to-do list. A grid. <laughs> just do one thing off your fucking to-do list. I'll put it in a different format. The way it is right now is the issue. <laughs> well, no. What? There's a health section. Health. 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 I'm waiting to hear from an ENT specialist. That's oh my not God. on my to-do list. About... That's Ear, nose, and throat. Yeah. Is that to do with the sausage? Oh, the sausage was me, but like, are you worried what? about it? <laughs> Did you just get confused between which of us had a sausage? No, it didn't spook me. My point is, it's crazy to have a health second. It's mad that you just saw that I had a sausage in my nose. And that but I thought you. maybe I spooked you enough. No, 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 no. I've got my own stuff going on, actually. I have a life when we're not together. Do you know that? I find it really hard to. to I, in my that. head, I feel like when you <laughs> think when you walk out of the room, I just freeze. Oh. No, I'm doing stuff the whole time. I know you're like washing and things. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And seeing people. Changing your hair. Yeah. <laughs> well, what? I mean, I don't change my Gigging. Head By the way, don't you think I finally figured out what the fuck's going on with the, this curl situation? I I always, like, your hair always looks immaculate. Like, there's no, this you're no, nice. I'm not, no, I'm you're not, nice. honestly. But I feel like I finally single time figured you're like, it I finally out. figured something out. I'm like, it still looks perfect. No, but there's this girl called Curly Karen, I think, or Wavy Karen. And she's a redhead <laughs> with red hair, with red hair, red hair with red hair, of course she is. Um, and it's an unfortunate name, obviously, culturally, as we speak. Um, but... <laughs> Girls' videos on how it doesn't matter what product you're using, my love, it matters how you're using it. Anyway, I feel like I finally nailed it. That's my news. I know you're going on holiday. Let's hear more about Mexico. Oh, the food's gonna be so nice. I'm, I'm gonna so be jealous. there. Like, when oh my god, uh, Helen, what yeah. if you die in Mexico or on the flight back? I hope you don't. Fingers crossed. What the fuck is <laughs> this? <laughs> but I hope you don't, obviously. But if you do, one, can I have your money? And two, um, can I have your money? And two, three. <laughs> For anyone who can't pick that up, that's can I have your money? <laughs> and three, can I though? And four <laughs> though, um, what do you want me to do with the podcast? If I die? Yeah, sure. is it okay if I... Do I not get to like do a quick mourning period quickly on the podcast? Like, just give me a minute. So you're saying, your question is, not like, have you booked him for the Frida Kahlo house? What food are you most excited to try? No, it's like, are you, you ready to get away insurance? and get some vitamin D? <laughs> no, but I, I, that is on my list. You that is on my it. list. I use that Avanti. It's very list. quick to do Avanti on the website. Yes. What's No. What? That's an uh, uh, travel insurance I provider. use the meerkats. Fine. Yeah. Um... Fine. <laughs> so I know I need to get travel insurance, but you just need to get that before you get on the flight. So that's fine. Yeah. And then, um, so you don't want to know any of that. You just want to know if I die on flight. Well, just if you die while you're away, what would you want me to do with the podcast? Obviously, I'd have an episode dedicated to you. But so, yeah, I would like a. But if I'd... I died in a plane crash. I just don't want to pivot into one of those like investigative pieces where I have to talk about you every single week. No, and also we'll, we'll know why I died. Like, there's it, like. If it like if I've eaten something or like I put a tablet in the wrong hole or something like yeah, we'd all be right. like oh yeah. yeah oh she choked on a sausage it's a shock like, it didn't happen earlier yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. it's yeah, a yeah, miracle yeah. she yeah. made it to thirty two yeah. like that mm. sort of stuff but like I would like 
I mean, do you not think like an episode dedicated to me in like a month of silence, like a period of mourning? A month of silence? That a period not of any mourning. Way to honor Helen Bauer. Silence, no, I agree. So, yeah. What you'd have wanted is for everyone to contribute to the Patreon. No. <laughs> <laughs> okay, if I die and Catherine or Andrew plug Patreon in my in memoriam <laughs> episode, I am telling you now for to the flowers. leave this podcast. She wants nice flowers. Oh, Catherine, <laughs> imagine that Patreon split two ways. <gasps> oh. oh. You <laughs> fucks. <laughs> Also, just because anyone's wondering, they're maniacally laughing to the point that Andrew's eyes aren't even opening fully. <laughs> so I've died in a plane crash. You split the patron two ways immediately. Is that your first port of call? <laughs> My body's in the Bermuda Triangle. Are we going to try and get that home? Oh, come on. They're not going to be able and to And my get money's that going home. to the seal sanctuary in Cornwall. No, it's not. It is. Marianne, get, my little sister is in charge of every penny I've ever earned and she can give her all to the seals that she wants. Is she actually? Them and the monkeys that Helen, are from the L'Oreal factory. This. Let's talk it through. I don't have a will. Why would I know? I don't have a will. Get a will. First Do you will. have a will? Of course I have a will. <laughs> You're 35. You have a will? Of course I have a will. With a lawyer and everything? Why am I a financial advisor? <sighs> It's how I got my pension. We're self-employed. Don't, you're saying that like I'm the We're freak here for not having one. You're saying it like I'm the freak. We are self-employed. I know that. So not very gonna... successful. No, of course. <laughs> but that's why I had to get some, I had to ask somebody about a pension. And while I was there, he was like, do you want a will? And I was like, yeah. But not to be this person, but you hire a financial advisor. Do you pay them? No, God, no. You only pay them if you're actually using services that cost money. So I paid to have my will certified or whatever the, the word is, signed by a But can't legal. you just buy a pack in like the post office about your Absolutely. will? Absolutely. You can do it through the co-op. You can do it through British Heart Foundation. You can totally do it online. Can't you just like write it on a piece of paper? I swear I've seen films, right? I don't know if that's binding. Oh, if I put blood on it or something. I don't know if that's... If I write it in blood. <laughs> 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 I feel like I've seen that in the film. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it, yeah. Yeah. I think I think sometimes people get wills written up. I don't think that's like crazy bougie to Side be note, like. Do you not think that'd be a really fun premise for a film? Like, a woman writes her own will, but she doesn't know she doesn't want to pay the legal fees. So she writes in her own blood, but she bleeds out and dies halfway through it before she gets to finish writing the name. So you just see the first initial, and they've got to figure out who it is. Is it a film? I'd say that's a film. Is it a, it's a film? It's, it's not, not a TV like show. it feels like a sketch. It feels like a HBO it like long form like document. You know what I'm saying? Not really. Yeah. Sorry to say it. <laughs> Sorry to say it. When did you write your will? That feels very morbid. Um, during lockdown, probably. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. You were going through a bit of a morbid I phase. was having a whole thing. Yeah, you really were. Yeah. Damn. So when we were doing Gigglist, you'd like done your will maybe that day. <laughs> <laughs> and then you'd go online and go, what's up? <laughs> but I mean, when we were doing Gigglist, I was having like the biggest breakup I've had in my lifetime. <laughs> I'd spend the entire day weeping and then be like, hey. How you doing? <laughs> yeah, like obviously, yeah. I was Wait, like, so you've done like um, assets, or is it just money? I don't have any assets. About to say assets. Well, what that nice drinks cabinet you've got. They don't get into like your dressing your, table, your petty little bits. They don't get into okay. that. They only get into like property. As in, at the level that I'm doing it, they're not getting into all that. I don't have enough of a big enough assets for that to be. It's just like the money I'm saving towards a house deposit. Who's that going to? Who is it going to? Hmm. Is it? No, it's not me. Is it? <laughs> Because I'm going to give it to the seals. So. Are you fucking? I would give you. I would give you some of mine if you. Come on. No. Do you Nothing want some for Catherine? Well, you know what? Do, what do you want? Nothing Sunil? for Catherine. I'll take Sunil. You have Sunil. I'll you take Sunil. Yeah. You can take him He's for his walks. He's investment portfolio, in my opinion. Oh my god! Yes, of course. Yeah. I'll take Sunil. You can have his business acumen, yeah. which, by the way, is not a man. It's like it's a thing. No, I know. I know. I just learned that recently. Acumen. acumen. Yeah. yeah, I thought it was like a an actuarial man, like a, an accounting man or something like that, an acumen, okay. and you could get an acu woman. But it's um an acumen is it's a different thing. Yeah, yeah, I've forgotten the exact definition, but you can Google it. Um, Catherine, <laughs> just to go back to what you're saying. I would like a memorial podcast, a monthly silence, no, and then I guess you could find a co-host. But I'd imagine it'd be too hard for you to come in here. Like, there's like pictures of me everywhere, like memories of me. I know Andrew wouldn't want to keep going. Sorry, just thought about who I'd get as a co-host. Sorry, I got lost. Go on. <laughs> go on. I genuinely want to know. <laughs> It'd be funny to go back to the OG gig was <laughs> You are fucking <laughs> mental. <laughs> There's so much context to that that I'm not even going to give. Are they free? <laughs> I'm not even going to give it. You have to be there from the beginning of our online gig during lockdown to even get that reference. I, you, right, you can have a co-host, <laughs> but you have to wait a month. And also like... We have to, like, maybe a Trusty Hogs live event, like a funeral sort of a thing. 
Oh, a live funeral. I mean, a qu- I don't want like a massive it. funeral, but like, it. let's do like a memorial service. We could stream it. Yeah, and don't like, don't book a whole lineup. Like, what should I sing at the end? You're singing. Shouldn't I in honor? Oh my god, yes, I'd love that. Simply the best, Bettina Turner, probably. Simply the best. I could do that. I'll, oh. put, I'll take my top off. Amazing. <laughs> and Andrew, obviously, I know him so well from Chess Musical. You're doing both parts. But, oh, <laughs> I think that, that's going to be quite sad. Not like, dearly, you, you would be crying. Yeah. To do it with me. Yeah. Well, yeah, I want people to. I be could sad. just leave your bits in silence whilst I cry. Andrew, I've died in a plane crash. Okay. No, you have to do them, and then when you when you cry too much I'll say things like grow up nice nice okay oh. pull yourself together <laughs> are you a man <laughs> come on Michael you could cry a bit <laughs> imagine Wait. getting emasculated for not singing I know him so well <laughs> strongly <laughs> enough <laughs> so it's sort of things that can only happen at my memorial yeah. yeah Wait, but you don't want me to die do you you want me to have a happy no, holiday gosh, no, no, I don't, I'm not going to give you your money of course not no no, <laughs> no listen, listen but if you die what am I do- Am I? Do you want me to keep going with the podcast? I have no doubt that you would. I don't think I'd want to. That you would not get or need a co-host, and it would be borderline the same podcast. <laughs> Had not thought about that. It would make minimal difference. And um, can I just hire in a you... redhead? <laughs> <laughs> and no, well, you'd have Penelope on loads. To try we to talk to me. To try year. to talk to me. We must get her in this year. You'd be we having could... mediums in to try to talk to me. And um You know me better than I know myself. Yeah, and you wouldn't stay for the whole funeral because those things bring you down. They do. Yeah, they do. I find funerals very Ooh, upsetting. Vibes. They're very upsetting. Just go for for me. A cigarette. Yes. Yeah. Wow, that's that's creepy actually. I did not realise I'd be doing that, but that's exactly what I would Spot do. Spot on, right? I'd miss you though. Oh, listen, same. Don't cry. Oh God. Don't cry. Oh my God, you did do therapy today. Get it together. Don't cry. I won't probably. You won't right now. No, you. We we've got so much to do together, and I love you so much. And I do think you're magic. Same. Oh my God, maybe I should threaten you with my own deaths more often. You're so sweet now. Because you're beautiful. (laughs) And everything you do is amazing. None of us die, okay? Okay, fine. Okay. Pat, Pat? So, um, yeah, I'm going to Mexico. Haven't got the suitcase out yet. Um, what? No, it's downstairs in a basement somewhere. But I need to put a neon sign down there so I can swap them over. It'll be fine. Are you joking? Um, no, because we've we've lost hat for basement, so it's just a bit of a nightmare at the moment. Huh? I got a, a hat with a light on the front of it, like a woolly hat with the lights. When you look around, because we can't get light in the basement, right. but we lost basement hats. So we don't really know what to do at the moment. Okay. Do you want my packing list? I have a packing list I keep on my phone just for all different types of holidays. And if it's like winter, sun, weekend, and then f- I love you, but you are a freak. I never what, forget. How anything. would you have a packing list for Mexico? You've well, never been. been. Okay, but most sun holidays involve the same things. Do you actually have it on you right now? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, can I see the packing list for a weekend comedy club in the UK? Okay. Winter edition. <laughs> the weekends are pretty much the same. Where's my packing? Let's list? hear it. Let's hear it. I cannot believe that someone would have this typed up on their phone. Uh, you, not even Catherine. That's, no, that's no. The person who this I feels would... even more like this feels too far for her. No, if someone said to me who has a packing list pre-prepared on their phone, I go Catherine Bohart. <laughs> Keys, wallet, passport, phone, laptop, laptop charger, phone charger, adapters. Should it be out of the country? Adapters. I need to remember that. Write that down, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> shall I? Shall I go on? Yeah. Makeup, makeup remover, exercise gear. Makeup remover. I always forget that one. But I'm not going to wear makeup, am I? Exercise gear. Okay. Swimsuit. Swimsuit. Outfits to perform in. Obviously, there'd be a swimsuit if I was going abroad. And if I was going abroad, I'd also have SPF and after sun. I'd also have antihistamines for heat rash. Yes. I'd also have anti bug stuff. Anti sun and D. I've got what, that. Why are you. Catherine can just forward you this list. Oh, yeah, you're right. Catherine, thank you. <laughs> yoga mat. If you Shampoo, say yoga mat, I'm going to walk out. Conditioner, face wash. Yeah. Toner, moisturizer. Hair clips, okay. hair brush. Okay, okay, right. We're on holiday. We're having a break. Pants, socks. <laughs> Don't you need any curl products? Any hair products if you're going away? Look, so we uh, water, seawater. Surely a leave-in conditioner for the heat, so your hair doesn't get dried out. Okay. 
I sometimes forget to bring a spare pair of pants to a weekend. Very away. gross, That's, Andrew. That has yeah, never happened sorry. to me. I wouldn't need the list to remember a spare pair of pants. What's no, wrong I with you? And always I take an extra pair because of all the times you shit yourself. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> the amount of times I've packed like two extra pairs. I I'm know, like, why, why, why am I doing ourselves? this? Why like, I'm really ourselves? not yeah. shitting myself like this. What? And then one yeah. time I got close to shit myself, I pulled them down technically. Like, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. This, uh, this made me feel the most straight man I've ever felt. I sometimes just get in the car and go, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I'm staying away. I forgot about that. Oh, well. Ooh. What the fuck? I'll go to a Primark and get some pants or something. Toothbrush, toothpaste, retainer if you need one. Don't have a retainer. Medicines? Yes. For your mental health? Yes. And actually, you'd be really proud of me. I am... Um, oh, this is actually not funny. <laughs> but, like, you know when, like... So, like, I was like, oh, shit, I don't have enough... Um, my repeat prescription won't come in, but like I need to get them now because I'm going away for like 12 mm. days and it wasn't available on my, I've got like the NHS app set up for the repeat mm. prescription and it wasn't there. So I was like, oh shit. So I called the doctors and I went, oh, like it's not come up. Like it's usually there. Maybe I need to talk to the doctor, but like I really need to get a hold of it because I'm going away on um, Wednesday evening. And they were like, oh, okay. Um, we'll get the pharmacist to call you back before five. I was like, great. Pharmacist called me up. I'm trying to like have this phone. Obviously you've got to discuss your mental health. As I'm doing that, I'm in a pub with Alison Spittle, Red Richardson and Sunil Patel. So I try to take the phone call outside. I go outside, Bobby Mayer's there going, hi Helen. I'm oh, like, God. not now. <laughs> and then they did that thing where like, you know, you have to fill in questionnaires to get repeat prescriptions sometimes about your mental health. And it's like, but it's all phrased within the last two weeks. And it's mm. like, in the last two weeks you have it. I was like, and then when I got back on the phone with the pharmacist after filling it out, I was like, just to check, you cannot get people to fill out this form two weeks after Christmas. Like, yeah. have you felt stressed or close to ending your life? Oh, I've been with my family. <laughs> like, everything is so much more extreme because all I'm doing You're is right. framing this out over Christmas. really very funny. It's uh, fucked it's up. It's quite dark. It's quite but dark. I, um, but the prescription is available now for pickup and I'm going to get it tomorrow morning. Okay, ready? And Francis has bought anti San. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, you are going on a sun holiday, so may I add in a sun hat or a cap of any kind? I um yes. Do you use anything? I get um thigh rub in the heat. Do you use anything for that? No, my thighs don't rub together. I've got thigh gap. Okay. Um, what, about, what about a bag? A bag? <laughs> Do you imagine not having thigh gap in twenty twenty four? A bag. I wear, I wear little shorts. A bag for when you go out. For the day, like not just a backpack, but just like do you like bring a handbag or a bum bag or anything like that for I have evening? a bum bag, okay, yeah. Great. Doesn't fit um, around my bum, put it between my teeth. Is it um is it all you can eat? Is it like buffet, whatever? No. Okay, well so one of the hotels is, yeah. Do you want to bring a little lunch box so you can bring your lunch for the day as well from the breakfast yes, buffet? Yes. I usually bring well, a little Well, that's the thing. That makes total sense because I always do that. But we're like only in like an all-inclusive for two days right at the end. It just never hurts to have a lunchbox anyway because you might just bring stuff from the flat out for the day. And it's just like, I never you're think right. it's bad. You're right. I took a lunchbox. Yeah? Yeah, no, it's smart. Hair ties for when you're swimming. Do you need goggles of any variety? Yes, I have. I own goggles. Yeah. Jewelry for your nights out? I have, I have earrings. Okay. And then obviously like shoes, socks, pants, clothes for your trips and Bob's your uncle. Yeah, you did not need a list for that. Okay, but it just means I never forget anything. And also, you the things that, that matter are the ones that you didn't have, not the ones that you do have. That's true, actually. And there was an, enough of them for me to be like, yikes. Do you want to come over and pack for Mexico for me? No, I just told you what to pack. I got a hot pink swimsuit. I bought it online the other day. That sounds great. Where's it from? It is really good. It's from ASOS Curve, but it has no boob support. It's like sometimes they do like mm. fat girl clothes for like, but they forget that lots of us have like massive titties. Yeah. So it's going to be like, I'm going to look like so cute and Barbie, but fuck me when I'm swimming, those boobs are going around my back. <laughs> <laughs> like, just picture me doing breaststroke, one wave comes and my tits just go, Whoa, <laughs> we're out. And luckily yeah. I'm just with Francis. So like, you know, they'll just come they'll over and it. just like tuck, tuck her back in underneath. Like, oh, I would just oh, enjoy the show. Nipples out. <laughs> Oh, it's going to be so good. I booked for like, so the day we land, like obviously I'm super early, you've got to stay awake. But like, I've researched like neighborhoods to walk around, like all these amazing markets. Nice. Like booked in Jealous. for, I think there's only two museums we had to book in advance. And I booked those. Frida Kahlo. Frida Kahlo and Museum de Anthropology. Books, do you have books packed? Yes. Well, I've got one and then I'm going to buy one at the airport. Notebook and pens? Because I always have a notebook and pen on me. Like that right. would just be a yeah, given. Yeah. And then, but things like shower gel, they just have that in hotels. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah. And like, That's after why I only sun, after sun, I think it's a con. Is Do it not you? a con? Is it a con? It feels like it's moisturizer just priced up a little bit. You know what I mean? Not really. I don't know. Do you, are you bringing moisturizer? I've read the beauty myth, so I see through all this bullshit. <laughs> 
I see through the bullshit that fucking society is, even though I spent 131 pounds on IPA. I was gonna say, are we like, are we gonna go talk about the laser machine or are we good? I've got um I've got a couple of but luckily books from people who listen to the podcast. Gorgeous, how nice. Um, what are you bring to read? I'm taking with me oh one called Duck Soup or Duck Lane or something. <laughs> Duck Lane. Right, <Road>. fabulous. <laughs> Thank you to the Leith press people nice. and um another one which has got numbers in it i'm reading burnt sugar at the moment and i really What's like it about? it's a relationship of between a mother daughter oh here we go depending on whose version of events you trust the mother may or may not be losing her memory is the sense i'm getting from the book so far really good burnt sugar really good oh i'll add that to my list and the first line is like incredibly searing and cutting and like unloving towards her mother and you're like okay this is a human person writing this rather than like it's just not a fanciful version of okay no i love that i love that like not the overly romanticized like it's your mum is your best friend at the end of it strong recommend like yeah strong recommend my best friend's my best friend yeah (laughs) okay i'll check that out um (laughs) and it's gwyneth and francis and emma black and catherine bohart Oh, I'll take it. I'm wow. in. Finally Hello. in there. Finally in there. Right here. No, because you're um, the, you know what? You can't win. <laughs> you can't win in this life. There's always a gay person with a problem, <laughs> and it, it is, it's a fucking nightmare. Helen, if there weren't gay persons with problems, we wouldn't have a podcast. Amen. <laughs> it's a minefield. It's a fucking minefield. Amen. You're all my best friends. Everyone's my best friend, including my mother. Are you happy now? <laughs> Let's bring on our guest. She's brilliant. She's so funny. You're gonna love her. It's Alison Jean Smith. Smith. Fuck this. <laughs> Hi, I'm Catherine Bohart and I'm going to the Soho Theatre in London for two weeks in March. Now, wouldn't it be convenient if they were back to back and I could just tell you the dates? Of course it would, they're not. The first (laughs) one begins the week commencing the 4th of March and the second one, after a week's break, begins the week commencing the 18th of March. So, early March, late March, where will I be? Soho Theatre, my loves. And I'd love to see you there. Um, the tickets I haven't sold necessarily as fast as I'd like them to. But listen, there are some available. And I'll be there doing my goddamn best with my new show. I'm ta- That's the debut of my new show. So please come. I'd be thrilled to have you in the audience. The show is called Again With Feelings. And the earlier you buy your tickets at Soho, uh, the less expensive they are. Thank you so much. What's up? It's me, Helen Bauer from Disney Hawks. <laughs> 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 want to say I'm doing my show one last time in the UK at the Earth in Hackney in London on March 2nd it's a double bill with Olga Koch you can see both of us you can see one of us come for the whole night you've got like a little break in between us to go get some food it's going to be magical it's going to be sexy and I'd love to see you there thank you Not to define a woman by her man, but sorry, you, you just walked in here with a rock on your hand. Aww. Excuse me, are you engaged? You did a lingerie? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got engaged. Look, it, Danny and I, Danny Sutcliffe, my boyfriend and comedian. I um, love that you full named your BF. And now fiance. Yeah, no, May fiance. I? It's so weird because I'm so used to saying boyfriend because people used to be like, what are you going to say, boyfriend forever? I was like, yeah, because I am not fussed with marriage. I honestly, it was never something I've never daydreamed of like the day in the dress. No, no yeah. I genuinely not. And so we've been together 10 years, and he's like, look, oh, do you want to, and I'll 10 like, years? Wait, hang on, 10, you can't just skip over the details. 10 years? Yeah. When does he propose? Like, September, he proposed. How'd yes. you do it? Well, we were just in the house, and I had come back, I think I had been away in Canada for a while, and I think I came back, and he's like, oh my God, I love you so much no, when you're babe. away. <laughs> and so he was like, just got down on his knee and was like, will you marry me? And it was like, just a moment, and I was like, yeah. And then, like, it's interesting because you don't think there's going to be, ugh, it's so lame, but, like, oh, it's like the thing is, I go, yeah, yes, yes, we're already married, but yes. Yeah. I go, but let's not announce it until we're in a position where, like, we can get a ring. Because I got to tell you, it never dawned on me, but as a woman, the moment you say you're engaged, people just, like, look at your hand, look at your that hand. That is so true. I literally I just did that. even 
thought of it until I was like, oh my God, I can't say I'm engaged. And oh, uh, even though I don't believe in any of this really, but still. No, I love you that you co- don't believe in it, but you've got a fuck off rock that is like, honestly, if you're listening to this, it's so funny to hear what she's saying, but look at the ring. It's like, I don't even believe in it, but if I'm going to believe in it, I'm going to believe in I'm it gonna fucking get big time. Gun, yeah. It's literally the Diana Kate Middleton ring without fucking around with the blue. It's just yeah, full yeah, diamond. Yeah. <laughs> well, I got it in Canada because the pound takes me further over there, guys. So nice. I still got a deal. Yes. It was on sale. Look at how romantic am I so romantic <laughs> I'll be getting my own ring in a different country without you I'll send you the bill yeah I literally day. was like I found it he's like okay I was like great done I think that is so romantic and then I got back and then it was like okay let's wait we were just busy and I was you know gigging and tired and then I got back on New Year's after my gig and I was like oh, wait my makeup's done my nails are done I was like should we do the announcement now and he's like <laughs> He just looked at me and goes, you really stitched me up on this one, didn't you? He's like, can I at least change my shirt? I was like, <laughs> okay, but hurry, I'm ready. Like, <laughs> so. the, we're losing the light. Yeah, we're losing the yeah. light. So, yeah. I love this. You got your nails done. You were like, it all just makes sense to me right now. Right now, yeah. I was like, this That's is perfect. so fun. Yeah. And did you yeah. do like a big post, like a collab post? We just No, I just did. A, we took a picture and I said, we did a thing. And I just put my hand up and then just left it at that. That's, and then That's Very cute. heterosexual of you. May I? Yeah, May I? We did a thing. We yeah. did a thing. Bam. Hand up. Yeah. I wish one time somebody meant fingering. Yeah. <laughs> or we busting. That's always what it means really deep down Fisting. inside. How, that's how you earn it, right? Yeah. Could you imagine <laughs> having shit all over your fingers and then the ring in the head? We I did a thing. I have a, there's a lot of diamonds, guys. Like, it's been 10 years. Like, I got it. I earned it. We're very in love. Wow, that's We're so very beautiful. In love. Finally, he got down on his knees. Am I right? <laughs> that's very nice. Yeah, that's so, very nice. That's sweet. So I love you, babes. And I think that's nice. That's my first I big public little chat. I love the idea so that guys. he might be listening to this. When truly, I don't think a man has ever made it through a whole episode. Ah, but <laughs> I just can't what, fathom though? it. My man's special. He is like. Is he? Did you stop. find a good straight man? Yeah. How? Do you want? And I have proof. I have proof. Go Are you on. ready? Yeah. Are you ready for this? Ready. He watches the Gilmore Girls. Yes, yes, I oh, know. Yes, he yep. used to come home from school. He said when he was, so he, when he was younger, he's a little bit younger than me too. Always do that. Yeah. Anyway, so <laughs> then you get a bit more youth. Uh, you can suck it like an energy vampire. I get a little oh, bit of youth from him, right? Lovely. Like it's like woo. Siphon um, it. Well, I'm very Siphon little, so I guess I'll be at secondary school. Well, well, you know. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm in my notes on a scandal era. <laughs> <laughs> If I say era, it makes it sexy and not creepy. I don't support <laughs> this. I'm Kate Blanchett. Which island am I going to? We did a thing. It's a crime. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Covered in shit with a geography textbook no! in the background. Hey, we did a thing. Stop ruining this lovely story. I'm so sorry. No, I love it. No. Okay, so I he watches the in. Gilmore Girls. And... Yeah, so he came home from school one day and started watching. And he's like, oh, I don't even know. And then at the end, he was sorry, like. Sorry, is he a teacher? No, it, this was like. Back in the day. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Back it was a memory. I was yeah. just like, no, if he's actually in school, I do think we should pause the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> we need to cut back. Can I we edit? You've been together 10 back? years, did you say? Sorry, no, can we just celebrate love? Can we just celebrate love? Um, and uh, he at first he was like, oh, I don't. And then like near the, he was like, I, then after a while I was like, it's just the you know the relationship that they have is really spe-. And, like he yeah that's he's my, in yeah. And I knew he was the one for me when I realized like he loves my parents. <gasps> Oh, that is rare and special. And even I have a hard time doing that. <laughs> I was about to say, like, right? like more than you do. Hard? Yeah, like, he's wow. in. Like, he is committed. And I remember looking Aww. at him one day, like, you know, because we've gone through some stuff, and he's there and present. And, like, he's like, I love them. Like, I care about them. And I was like, oh. Okay, wow. Is he an Englishman? Yes. He's Mancunian. Who what? Okay, a northerner. Girls after a school. good northerner. I gotta tell you, I'm. I gotta be careful. I don't want to make enemies, but yeah, I like northern men. Yeah, I think that's a reasonable shout. I think, I think that's a very reasonable shout. Solid. Just, yeah. yeah. Where did you meet him? At a wedding. <gasps> Yay! We love a trashy wedding meet cute. Uh, well, Haley Ellis, a very talented, lovely, we hilarious love comedian. Ellis. Yeah, was uh, trying to hook us up for a long time because we had never really? met. We were both comedians. We never met. Just Weird. like yeah doing different gigs even though I lived in Manchester then I moved to London it was when I moved to London that I met him no way so then I'd always go back to Ma- but it worked out well because then I had a home in Manchester and London yeah. like, oh was, that is nice honestly like the universe was just like okay you, also you there's no this. denying the sexual tension of like a slightly long term it isn't quite it's not oh. easy like you know like you gotta wait to get on the train to see them like it's, there's like those things that like they seem annoying but they actually can be an aid time right? time 
part is the key because at least you're living your own lives yeah. and then you get to come yeah. back and be like I have things to tell you and yeah. stories to share yeah. and like yeah. you're not like oh cereal again hey like there's <laughs> yeah. Yeah. a beauty in it yeah. that's so Aww. nice oh, I well I need that. to meet someone at a wedding that's the plan yeah, yeah. it was oh. Katie Mulgrew and Lee Martin's wedding it was a Stop. wedding that's like, so funny I know I, I'm trying to think if you should meet somebody at a wedding Helen well I Baron. keep going to family weddings, weddings. that's really tricky because the yeah. last family wedding I went to <laughs> was my cousin Pete and his wife Astrid's wedding and my aunt was like if you th- my son's good looking and I was like he's my first cousin like, <laughs> and then she was like well maybe you could just date together and I was like no obviously not that's, that's really fucked up and then she just like really was like pushing on the best man on me like that was like the main thing of the wedding but I think family weddings is tricky to hook up with yeah. someone because yeah. yeah. I'm not into the first second cousin I'm not going to be a bitch about it but like <laughs> first cousin there's a line right I'd say cousins yeah generally. what would granny yeah. say not much she's dead but like if she was here yeah you got no you don't want to disappoint the dead woman for no. goodness for goodness you sake. know I joined Hinge again for the first time in ages yeah See, look okay so I hadn't done a lot of you know I locked it down oh yeah I keep forgetting I knocked <laughs> I was lucky enough to like you know I missed a lot of I think I did Badoo for a while. Anyway, what's Badoo? Oh, it was a real obscure. <laughs> it was a real oh, Andrew's obscure had one. A was, <laughs> it was just I don't know. I, I did. anyway. Badoo. Mm. Badoo. B a d o o. If it's still out it's there, it's like a yellowy like. sort of logo app. I'll yeah. show you. Hang on. I know it was a really. What's its niche? Well, yeah. love. Oh, they've changed the logo. Sorry, oh, um, love. Yeah. <laughs> But what what's you know the way they always have like an angle? Oh yeah. What's Badoos? Maybe either really dirty people or people like me who are afraid to commit into the world of like dating apps. I was like, well, no one's really gonna find me on Badoo. Like I just <laughs> thought it was a really was like, like a practice app. <laughs> yes, yes. Dip your that toe with Badoo. Cool. Is it? Uh, dip your toe with Badoo. That's a good logo. That's a good um, slogan. <laughs> what is theirs? Um, and then it's going to turn into a foot fetish. Website. Create connections with people near you. That's all it says. Yeah. Were you by yeah. chance on an ac- accidentally on a networking app? <laughs> like a LinkedIn. <laughs> wow. I met some forward people on yeah, that networking app. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm also disappointed I didn't get hired. Because I, 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 I... You did the work. I did the work. I earned the diamonds. Um, That's so funny. That okay, funny. so you skipped most of that. Yeah. And Fair play. Yeah. So it's good. So yeah, weddings. Weddings are good. But so I, yeah, yeah. And how is the hinge re-entry going? Yeah, yeah. So I decided because I'm, I'm manifesting now. I manifest. Me and it's my friend went through the manifestation boards. We you talked about it in it. the extras last. You week. can do it. They work. <laughs> do they? Right. Yes. Because I have been very ambitious on this manifestation. Mm-hmm. I put some simple mm-hmm. things on it, like. Um, go on holiday to Mexico. And it's yeah. like, oh, great. Tick, 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 done. And then I put things on it like, have a good relationship with food, which feels ah. like, son, right? That's exactly I the right response. I like what you're doing. Good phrasing, good every wording. Day, like, I'm yeah. going to have a good relationship with food. I'm going to enjoy it and not use it as a punishment every now and again. <laughs> like, but, can you imagine can, if I was like, I, say, well, I manifested it, so I guess it's all done now. <laughs> but no, but I do think, the thing for me, it's not like I think manifesting. It's not, I don't think it's like you put it out to the universe, it will come to you. But what I do think is if you, in in pushing it out to the universe, you're very clear on what you want. Yes. I think you head more purposefully in that direction. So you're more likely to get it. Like I think really honing in on exactly what you want, especially out of a specific time frame, means you tend to actively pursue that. And there a is a time frame because it's 2024 in the middle of my manifestation board. Right. So it has to be this year. But yeah. even, you're focusing. And even it says like, love. Have a healthy relationship oh. with food is better than like lose weight like try to exactly. accept myself like I think even that phrasing is so good because it does the thing I had a therapist say this really annoying thing to me and he was like I don't really feel like you talk about it like a relationship but it is a relationship yeah. like it's like is it hurting you is it harming you is it helping you is it empowering you is it distracting you like these are all things you would ask about somebody somebody with whom you had such a toxic dynamic yeah but you're not doing that with food. And I was like, fuck. So I think the specificity is good. I'm doing it so badly with food at the moment. I went to do a gig on Sunday. And they were like, how are you? And I was like, I'm just in a horrible way. Because you know I'm addicted to those bulldog Korean noodles. Yeah. I had this like, Sunil was like, can you get some bulldog noodles? But the only ones he could find were two times spicy. But I'd run out of like cream cheese to like try and dull down the flavour. I was like... Like, I don't want to wax my arsehole. Let's put it like that. Like, I'm just fucking rinsing myself. Like, but I can't stop eating I them. I wish you MSG could see Alison's so nod. Bad. It's vacant. It's left the building. It's no, a nod. No, that, it's I'm a nod losing, that's I'm like, taking it in. I know, I know it's going to make me feel sick. It's a nod that's sick, gone to a safe place. But I can't place. not have it. 
mm-hmm. and it's just punishing. Uh, yeah, I know. I hey, look, I am with you, right? Mm-hmm. Like, that and the two Domino's pizzas. I swear, I was going to be for lunch on Wednesday, but it bloody. Oh, happened, it's so, look. I tried. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, now I'm into weed gummies. <laughs> Fuck me, that pizza. Ah, hot, now large you're talking my talk. I didn't know if I was like some people don't, but like, look, I'm from Canada. You're Canadian. We knew you were yeah. going to talk about it. It's okay. We yeah, we, great. we budgeted okay. for this. <laughs> it's like. It, it is a different thing. Uh, I also, I just think it's a lot better than alcohol. I think there's less of a depressive swing. I think booze makes you swing it. So true. And don't let people say, oh, then you'll just want to eat. Well, guess what? I ate before. Like, yeah. I've been fat all my life. Okay, and the okay? food tastes like, better. Can we say that? Yeah. It's it magical. Yeah, it's it so good. good. And it's you get a giggle and it's, I don't know. I, I'm a big... I just want it to become legal here. I would like it to become the industry that it is in Canada where you walk into a dispensary and it's like entering an Apple store yes. and someone greets you with an iPad and they're like, how can I help you? Are you looking for something sativa or do you want indica? Or are you a CBD? Perhaps so I don't like, know what that like, means, but the ones exactly. like, I was strains, like, strains I of, of plant. Have, oh, is it? I will say, by the way, a weed is not good for me. My brain goes like, Look, not for everyone. Yeah, uh, Mine is like, Reaction one, puke. Reaction two, paranoia. Reaction three, so sad. <laughs> yes. And I would never want sadness. That's what booze is for me. I enter a yeah. world of like, <laughs> like it just yeah. happens eventually. Yeah. So I think yeah. I'm not my drug, but I also agree that it should be legal. It's just, why not? Yeah. Come if on. alcohol is, it's crazy that it's not. And people I'm are like, having... you're going to legalize weed and not other drugs? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. That's what I said. <laughs> that's exactly Did I stutter? I'm <laughs> Did so I'm manifesting I being a pothead. Are you? Yeah. <gasps> I'm going to be a stoner um, who finds really love, fun. a good will. relationship with food. And also, um, according to Manifestation Board, um, I'm going to be moving a lot in my body and swimming. Oh. Um, haven't done it yet. Um, but also, I'm going to, um, I'm going to get a script. I'm going to get a sitcom deal. Yeah. Yeah. But that's just like going to happen really soon because I've manifested it. Um, but the love one, to go back to that. I'm worried I haven't done it right because Gwyneth said, who I did it with, that you need to be really specific. That's what her friend did. Yeah. You've got to be really specific yeah. as to what you're looking for. And I sort of ran out of time with collaging. <laughs> 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 I didn't get too specific. Yeah. And I'm worried, like, I need to, like, redo it because it just says, like, find someone and the, the main thing this is really sad because it's actually out in my room and I hid it when people came over for New Year's Eve so I was like this is too personal right no, like, obviously you can't yeah, have, you like, gotta put that away so like, but I put it back up and it's like it's fine my housemate sees it but it's like the, what I'm looking for is someone who loves me at the same time I love them at the same amount right because mm. I've never had those two things match up but then it's like I think I took it too earnestly. <laughs> so then when I was setting up my hinge, I put that as what I'm looking for. No! <laughs> no, 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 it's too earnest. No! Because I got no matches for two days. That's crazy. Take that down. I think it was. <laughs> Take that down. <laughs> down. I have. I have. It I was have. too earnest. It was Take too Take that down sweet. immediately, Helen. <laughs> it was too pure. Because the thing is, I, it's true, but if I saw someone else like that, I'd be like, oh, lame. Yeah. <laughs> well, I am worried about the man that'll come to that. Like, I know. Yes, right? Yes. Like, no, no. Don't get me wrong. You're being honest. You're doing all the right things. But I'm like, mm. oh, I don't no, yeah. not yet. I haven't found my balance between You're my truth strongest... and manifesting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and my hinge profile. <laughs> it's not quite matching up. Yeah. So Neil said I had to do it with you, Catherine. Because, you know, we met up for a coffee, like, was it last week? Yeah, I'd have Just liked after to get New into Year's. it. Um, and he was like, I think you should sit down with Catherine. And do Did he this. know that you had written that in the bio at the time? He he had read through it then no wonder and laughed he was at like, it with a friend. You should Catherine. talk to Catherine immediately. Yeah, yeah. you should talk please to another person. Yeah. Woman about yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think this is my um, area to speak about. <laughs> <laughs> and then... <laughs> <laughs> what it to me what I just want somebody who loves me at the time that I love them sound, might read as is oh no don't go on <laughs> <laughs> never mind <laughs> it's okay it just might might read as when is it my turn <laughs> <laughs> just once mm-hmm. I just think you're more comfortable with yourself and that makes you seem which is like you're obviously just saying you're open to love and it'd be nice if it works out but but it also doesn't help that it's hinged, so it also has like want children, yeah, um, <laughs> looking for a monogamous long term relationship, <laughs> yeah. like like all those things. I just think like, the, bi- the bio is the place to be a bit breezy. You know what I mean? Like it's a it's a space to just vibe and chill. Hey, yeah, like yeah. hey girl. Uh, hey. 
<laughs> just, a, just a little more chill. Once we finish the episode, do you guys mind having a quick love look to. over it, maybe? Love to. Yeah, yeah, I'll look. Yeah. I, I mean, don't take my advice, and I would love. <laughs> I say, don't take my advice, and I give advice on a show. I'm like, yeah, no, no, I will look at it. But I, yeah, you, I look, at least you're going to totally eliminate ones that are not for you. So this is good. Yeah. But I agree, it should be less like, Breezy. Desperate, less desperate. No, should we I say don't no? even say desperate. That is a bad, just less serious. I think. Yeah. Less it just can serious. you just see how confused? Because the manifesting, I haven't written all this down, but it's like Catherine, me, spoken about it. What I want is to. So I'm going. I'm in Mexico right now when this podcast comes out. Mm -hmm. Have my holiday, but speak to someone on Hinge. Come back, date them, yeah. and then just as we're falling in love, I fly to Australia to do a six-week tour there, and they're craving me the entire time. And then I come back and have the best sex I've ever had. <laughs> Okay, and then it's just love from that point forwards, and I've got a date for my friend Fee's wedding in August. Okay, okay? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then by that point, we'll be like, we'll be long term. It's a pretty fee specific right? plan, FYI. It is. It's no, no, heavy. but then I'll be long term by the time it gets around to Christmas next year, and then we don't have to do Christmas for my family or his family. We can go, go away. to Vietnam. Vietnam, <laughs> yeah. even, even. And also, yeah. because of my healthy relationship with food, I'll be able to go down those tunnels that the little Vietnamese men went down. And I'll be able to go on that tour. <laughs> Yeah. Are you going to get shorter because of your healthy relationship with food? Oh, I hope not. No. Goodness, no. 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 I always want to be tall. No, six like, one, that worked for me. 47 minutes ago, um, you seemed like you thought manifesting worked. Uh, well, look, I do. <laughs> I do. I, I, and even the way you catch yourself, you're like, I need to be more clear. I need to, duh. you know, the fact that you're even analyzing all of this, Helen, and having these moments, good. Thank you. You're creating a better picture. Yeah. Have you ever manifested something and it's worked? One time, <gasps> accidentally. Stop. Say more. Well, okay, it's so silly. It's silly. I was in a, I was in university and I was in a play and there was uh, one of the directors. He was kind of like the student director. Mm. And I just kind of had this like, <laughs> oh, this is so lame. No, it's great. But I had this moment well, where so I was love like, drama university yeah. he's going to come to me and tell me that like, I'm really nailing this and like, it is exact and I'm doing really good. And like, because I really admired this guy. And one day at a rehearsal, he came to me and he said the exact fucking words. You're really nailing this? That I like made in my head. But listen, here's the thing. I didn't do that with intention. It just kind of happened. So I believe that that sort of thing can happen. But I think intention's the hard part. You yeah. know what I mean? Like then when I desperately like want something to happen, I'm like, I'm just going to see it. I'm just going to abandon it. It never works. It was such a natural, pure just. And it was just like a weird deja vu. But it was a deja vu I created in my head. And then it happened. And I think that's what manifesting is. Like a dream coming reality. Yeah. Like a Disney princess. That's also a manifestation board. No, I board. think manifesting is coming up with a goal <laughs> and then breaking it down into about 15 parts in a plan that you intend to follow so that you achieve the goal. See, that's why you're gonna, you're successful. Because you do that. <laughs> you are good. I know, I look, I don't know you all that well. And I know that you are. Already I admire your organizational. You're nice. And you're nice. It's true. I, but I just think if you... I think that the manifesting in and of itself gives you the confidence to break down the plan, right? Gives you timeline, goal yeah. setting. Makes you think like, okay, what do I actually want this year? If I make, because you can't have everything. That's the other thing is I think with manifesting, you can't have it all. So it does make you prioritize and think about what you care about most. At that time. Mm -hmm. And not forever, yeah. right? Like everything can change. Like, yeah. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So I will have a boyfriend to go to Vietnam with by December. I think if we have a look at the old hinge. Yes. And start with... Likes Vietnamese food. <laughs> Rather That's than. Because the long term goal is to go to Vietnam. So don't let's you feel. Rather like than one day, my prince. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 32 and single my entire life. Just I'm just waiting for my turn. <laughs> Monogamous, long term, one children. <laughs> Likes Vietnamese food <laughs> and a laugh. <laughs> yeah, I do like to laugh. I do like to laugh. I should say that. And you are fun, and you have a fun life. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. someone is gonna enjoy. You have such a cool life. life, right? Yeah, yeah. It's You're a cool life. We're all living cool lives. Yeah, We're, we are. I'm sorry. We're truth tellers. That's what we are. Yeah. That is what comedy is. <laughs> I Stand go on stage every night. Yeah. And I speak my truth, and I resonate. 
That's what I do. That's wow. what you do. That's, that's what you do. I tell a few fingering jokes. <laughs> Me too. Which is also my well, truth. That's my truth too. It's my truth. Anyone who says it isn't is lying. <laughs> was was maybe not paying attention for the first six weeks of our relationship. <laughs> I was definitely doing it then. Okay. You have so. some of the best fingering jokes in the country, <laughs> Alison. Like seriously, like you're like a top-notch finger joke teller. Yeah, oh, hard to agree. Oh my god, that's so awful, but yet yeah, really, thanks. I think you've got an area of expertise, and I think yours is just amazing. I'm pretty like, good at it. I have classy ones, even like I have ones that are like I think catch people off guard because they're like, oh, what? oh, that's good. You know, <laughs> like it's like. It's sure it's it's a fingering <laughs> joke, but like, but it's got layers. Yeah, it's right. got layers. Come I on, love, we've all been there, right? We love to see it. We love yeah. to see Can it. Can I ask a question about your accent? Because I think I just had a little like moment. Yeah. Do you know that thing that's going viral at the moment of the nan and the little girl, little like monster thing? We're like, who's that wonderful girl? <laughs> Could yeah. she be any cuter? And it's a Canadian kids TV show. Is that film the same place you're from? No. Same well, town? Uh, no, but <laughs> we do generally kind of have that sing-songy. That's how yeah. you can tell the difference between American and Canadian. No, no offense to any Americans out there, but it is a bit more of a Shooting. start, stop. Yeah. yeah. I thought Can it was the passport thing. <laughs> well, yeah. But, well, yeah, you know, but you don't want to say it. I'm not, yeah, say but it's, uh, Canadians just have a, a nicer tone. I said it. Oh, I've made enemies now. I'm no. sorry, America. It's fine. Good. They know. Are you fine. from Toronto, Toronto? I'm from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Alberta! Yeah. Oh, by the Rocky Mountains. Oh. Uh, for, okay, this is probably too young, but maybe some might. 1988 Winter Olympic Games. Eddie the Eagle, Jamaican bobsled team. That's where I'm from. Holy That's shit. So we made, if nothing else, we created really good memories for the world that year it was hosted. That's, That's so fucking cool. Eddie the Eagle could not be more current right now. He's about to start on Dancing on Ice. Good point. Vote Lou Sanders. Vote Lou Sanders. Yeah. <laughs> hey, so on this podcast, we have listeners write in. They tell us their problems. We Amazing. give advice. I already feel like you're going to be great at giving advice. My question is, what kind of advice giver are you? I am one that I try to not judge. I try to affirm the steps that they've already taken, even by acknowledging the problem. I think that is always a very big step, right? God, she's good. That's yeah. really good. Goosebumps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. To, to have the awareness to look at something and go, I need to look at this. I need a perspective yeah. that is not my own. Also, I love giving advice because uh, it's not my problem. And uh, <laughs> then I can think about somebody else's shit. Brutal. And it's always easier to deal with other people's shit. You get such a clear picture, like... Okay, and great. Yeah. And just before we move to the problem, because um, I've been looking at them instead of your eyes the whole time. How have you gotten such perfect eyebrows? Aren't yeah, you sweet? are we brushing and trimming? What are we doing? I yeah. was looking at them too. They're that is so mental. Astonishing. That What's is happening? so funny. Yeah, I do do a little brush and trim. Look, I wish I hadn't trimmed. Look, I 1992 was a rough year for all of us. Yeah. If yeah. you were a woman yeah. and alive, they really encouraged you to rip out your eyebrows. Yeah. And it was just a line. So it took a lot of I work. I had them waxed in the hospital when I was born. They were like, absolutely not. <laughs> this baby's not going to well with those. That's fucking mental. Rip them off. Yeah. Get them out. Get them out of there. Terrible. No, yeah. it's embarrassing. Pierce her ears and rip her eyebrows off. Now yeah. she's my baby. <laughs> and um, a bow on the head. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Enter the world. My friend Carmen Trey, she's like an amazing stand up in Germany. You've got to go see her if you live there. But she used to have this amazing joke about like everyone's always piercing little baby girls' like ears so they know that it's a baby girl that's constantly piercing. And it's like, you can tell by looking in her eyes, there's no hope. <laughs> <laughs> So sad. Nice. It's so it's true. Nice. But wait, so how are we doing it? <laughs> okay, so are you doing them yourself? Yeah, I've always done my own eyebrows. I've always holy be shit because I just I can't, I don't trust others. Like I've been through yeah. a lot. It's taken a while. I accidentally had mine permed three weeks ago. I totally get it. Did you perm your eyebrows? No, well, accidentally. I didn't know what the word was. <laughs> and um, yeah. She I went in that. for lamination. A lamination. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, it's not being a success. Yeah. <laughs> Put them back. Yeah, that's yeah. it. That's You're my fine. Girl. But you've still got them. You've got lots of eyebrows. Yeah, great. permed. I've got permed eyebrows. <laughs> But so you're doing a brush? Yeah, so I do, I pluck, right? Yeah. And then I also have entered the world of shaving a little bit of that, like I'll dermaplane at home and also dermaplane Around. so you can tidy up. Yeah, or which also would... saves you a little pluck now and again. Yeah. Sometimes I go and get a threading if it's a couple of ladies that I trust, but like, mm, yeah. you know. Okay. And uh, yeah, I do. I do a little brush up. I'll do a tiny trim. I used to be an over trimmer, so it like went in down too much. Yeah. So I've really held back and I even allowed myself to go through an awkward phase where they were all a mess at the What front. are you trimming with? A very tiny pair of scissors. Sewing wow. scissors. Yeah. Or like yeah. a nail scissors? Yeah. Okay, fabulous. Yeah. God, 
they're amazing. Yeah, that's really nice. Thanks Actually, a lot. really hard to look away. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I, I feel like I've been taking make, making what no, must feel really like nice. intense eye contact, but it's actually just like real, like me trying to get into the bones of what's going on it's there. It's really sweet. Like I thank you so much. I really appreciate yeah. it. Um, pleasure. It's a pleasure. I, now and again, I use uh, gross serums because I always try to get longer lashes. Oh, Me people too. have good lashes. I'm constantly I'm using of... the growth stuff, and they're so expensive, and they never quite have worked for me. Yeah. No, but I, I didn't even know we trimmed our eyebrows until like <laughs> literally a couple of years ago. Like this yeah. is mad. Yeah. yeah, it's weird what we're expected to. Yeah, like, there's a lot eyebrows. going on. We've got to stay busy. We must stay busy, or <laughs> else we'll have time for a vault now. <laughs> Andrew, <laughs> tell us, please. What's the problem? Hello. If that's true, I'm. Gonna be really pissed off. <laughs> it is true. That it is you true, start babe. getting angry now. Okay, problem. Didn't you say you read the beauty? Myth? I read the beauty myth, That's but I said it was thing, trying babe. to keep us poorer, not revolt. Both. Oh. It could be both. Oh my god, they're stopping us from figuring out the equal pay thing for everything. They're stopping yeah. us from everything. Yeah. No offense, men are great. Who was it I read? I'm not listening. It's okay. Who was it? He was saying we were allowed to wear those female, the future's female T-shirts because um, it's not true. But if it were actually a real threat, then oh, men would there's no way they'd be selling the t-shirts. The future's yeah. not female? I don't know that it is, babe. It will be if we continue to stand by one another. This is the Alison June Smith backstage or just a drink I conversation. I know, she's so supportive. Women are supporting women more We've and never more had now. a network before. We're beginning to have a network. Look at what's happening right now. I'm sitting down with you guys on a podcast. For years and years and years, again, no offense, men, but it was dudes able to pass off things to other dudes. For the first time ever in the world of comedy and probably business and probably there is more of a network. And so we are able to go, I share. Yeah. I share, I yeah. share, I share, I share. Yeah. Before, we were pitted against each other. It was like, Highlander, there can only be one. Like, really only could, one, yeah. and then no room for... Same with our business, same that with everything. That film is mad. What a reference. I know. <laughs> During a beautiful speech mm -hmm. about like, feminism <laughs> with women, you reference the film Highlander. Highlander. Yeah. I liked it. I've never seen it, but I felt like I was there. They got to chop off one another's heads. Like, that's yeah. what it felt like. Yeah. Like, I'm sure... Yeah. Even, like, it was like... Even before me, I'm sure the women back in the days, days, days in any industry, you know, comedy or whatever, were like, eh, eh. Yeah. like you were just so. But also, it wasn't untrue. There really was just finite space. Like they weren't mm -hmm. imagining it. Now we have to trust that that's not true. Yeah, and continue to make support, it support, and of course, kinda... but also support. I'm mean, getting other. there like yeah. so slowly because it's like you can you can do all female lineups, but I'm yet to do an all female lineup that isn't been called like Chuckle and Cunt. That's or what I mean. <laughs> funny Bird. <laughs> Like, you know, like it's always Chuckle and Guns, awesome. So whimsical. <laughs> chuckle so... and Guns would attend that. I would okay, yeah, we'll and perform cunts. at Chuckle and Guns. Like, oh my god, if we do Chuckle and Guns, anyone who shows up to Chuckle and Guns is my kind of cunt. Yeah, like, I, I agree, want. I agree. Should we start running Chuckle and Guns? We'll do the London version. You can do the Manchester Please version. Please do. Like, done, 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 done. Done. It's, I want people to be like, it's rowdier than Jonglers used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Those cunts are chuckling like fuck. You better have a tight five finger. Like, <laughs> like, you got five minutes on fingering. You don't have a period joke, bro? What? What? <laughs> what? It'd be so good. It'd be so Could good. Could you imagine? That would be the greatest thing Wouldn't ever. it be amazing? Women going fucking crazy for it. Like, yeah. Like, they yeah. do. Like, it would just be just the energy. It's like a strip show. That but would just be for phenomenal. Like, Discounts if you're on your period. <laughs> can I just really Skip quickly. Test. <laughs> can I point out though, that we were just saying, like, how good it would be just like an all female lineup just happens to be an all female lineup. And now all three of us are like, Sorry, no, I let's really chuckle and cut, chuckle and cut, chuckle and <laughs> Let's smell them to see if they're on the We can blame the men for everything, but we do hold ourselves back sometimes as well. I'll say that. Like, oh, yeah. we have the opportunity in this podcast to discuss anything. Equal pay the future, and we discuss <laughs> Allison's eyebrows. <laughs> and her engagement See? to a man. They're fucking and winning. That's also They're one winning. Of yeah. We could have discussed anything, sure. Catherine. Yeah. I feel bad. I do also regret saying that we could have a discount for women on their periods and then following it up with sniff tests. Yeah, that was a shame <laughs> as well. I don't feel good about any of it. <laughs> Let's we... listen to a listener problem. Okay, We're yeah, not okay. proud of And ourselves. promise to do better? Yes. Promise to do better. I promise yes. to do better. I promise to do better. Because the future could be female. That's the new version of the t-shirt. Thank yeah. you. Listen, female... Uh, mm. I mean, it should be definitely, but like, okay, c we can but make could. it happen. Female's an option. Could be a thing. Yeah. It's definitely one of the options. Female's a strong option. <laughs> yeah. Consider us. Give us a go. For your consideration, female. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one. Uh, this is a problem from H. Hi, H. Uh, 
and I've picked this for uh, their geographical relevance to this podcast. H, come on, let's hear it. For H is an Irish boy mm. and says, thank you, uh, Catherine, for flying the flag for us and consistently correcting those heinous English for their wrongdoings, to put it lightly. <laughs> A pleasure, H. No bother. Once again, to quote Alan Partridge, if you can afford to immigrate, you can afford to eat at a moderately priced restaurant. <laughs> Continue. You're a turd. <laughs> Go on. I, 25 male gay, have no friends or social group. No! I've recently returned to my native Dublin after studying in the UK and Canada. Uh, well, no. uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, I've landed my absolute dream job. Yay, congrats. Uh, I love my job and feel so blessed. No. Professionally, I'm killing it. However, now that I'm living back at home, I don't need to tell Catherine how stupid Dublin rent is, I remember why I left Dublin in the first place. Everyone my age is moving to Australia. I have zero social life and I'm so fucking lonely. My parents are out more than me. I started my new job for a major Irish company. I shouldn't say the name, but it's Whopper. (laughs) And 10 year old me would be over the moon. Wait, 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 is Whopper the name of the company? No, I think that's like an, sorry. No, it means it's it's probably like Guinness or, (laughs) it's a big Irish company. It's a big one, it's a Whopper. It's Erlingus, it's Erlingus. Or a PwC or something. Could could be Burger King. Yeah, Yeah, like a Whopper burger. No, that's American. I wonder who it is. Go on. Um, the Catholic Church. <laughs> <laughs> it's a big industry. <laughs> Why is my social life as a gay man down? I don't get it. <laughs> anyway, um, I love the job with CV and the CV um, effect it will have for me. However, I am so lonely with zero friends Aww. and there's no social life in this job. Um, despite my be- best efforts, I can't make friends. I know both of you get a lot of questions about becoming comedians, etc. However, what would you say to someone who is a junior corporate role for a big international company? Okay. Um, uh, and loves it, but is so uh, sad and lonely. Mm. There is nothing for me beyond my job here. Dream role, but I'm miserable outside the office. Should I stick it out, go back to Canada, move to Australia? Please help. Uh, love you both. Thank you for the taking the time to read this email. Even if it's not featured, please know that I love you all dearly. Lots of love, H. Aww. H, that's so nice. I have so many thoughts. I want to yep. make you so many May friends. May I? Yeah, go please. for it. Please. So what you need to know, by the way, is that there is the... Uh, Dublin is like one of the most expensive places to live at the moment in Europe. I think possibly the most expensive in Europe. We're also having a Fuck. crisis of loneliness. It's the most lonely city for young people in the world at the moment. It is really like a dire situation so hey you're first of all not wrong crazy or alone which i think is heartening right like it's like definitely an issue that you are feeling the consequences of and i'm so sorry you are but a huge number of young people go to australia and because the working conditions are better the pay is better Mm -hmm. and you might actually see the sun and also because rent and moving out of your parents property is so implausible for a lot of people at the minute i know that sounds like it's exactly the same as in um london but i what i will say is i think it's much more broken into city and suburbs in Ireland so you have like it's quite difficult to socialise if you live at your parents house you probably live less much less centrally than you might here Um, but anyway all of that is to say I think you should stick it out for at least a year so that looks good on your CV but I, I think two things one Corporate environments have one benefit, which is that they want you to only have work in your life, which means they also facilitate a lot of socializing in work, which I know sounds naff, but it's definitely better than no socializing. So my tip is you are a gay 25 year old man. There is not a committee in that building that won't want you to join. May I strongly recommend finding the proactive women who will be there and making friends with them. Join but your they committees. But no like social life at work? At, outside of work. Outside of work. No, but, but in no, work, I know, I but, but I'm saying find the networks, find the like okay. queer network, find the set one up, find the sports team if there's one in the in work. Also, can I say, Ireland's really good for um, sure. adult sports clubs. There's shit loads. Like loads of my friends play tag rugby, loads of my friends play football, loads of my friends play five aside. I think strongly recommend finding out what your local sports team is. Also, I don't want to stereotype. There's a shitload of great adult choirs in Dublin, all of which are outside of work hours. Now, here and we go. Here we good. go. Choirs. Loads yeah. of them. Because listen, people had crisis of faith. They didn't lose their voices. People are ready to sing. Where are we mm-hmm. going on a Sunday? Mm-hmm. So there's definitely those. Those are all good options for you. What I would also say is, if you work a really good corporate junior job, junior position I think you would not you shouldn't want to move out of your parents house into something unaffordable like living alone but maybe you should look into the plausibility of living with some strangers your own age even in a big house share 
maybe it's not ideal maybe you try it but it might be a really good way to find friends that's what my sister did when she moved back to Dublin she that's interesting she lived in a bigger house share and suddenly because she had lived in, in London for a while and also similarly was in a, a similar position and um and look, you don't need to spend loads on it. Obviously, I mean, it will be expensive. It'll be more expensive than it should be. But it's a thought before you give up on Ireland entirely. That said, you couldn't pay me to live there. Go <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I feel like I should cut that out, but that's just my truth because... Um, but that's because when I think I went and I came to quite a formative place in my life, Ireland was... It, I feel like it hurt me. <laughs> like, uh, because I... It was... Uh, more way more homophobic than it is now and I needed it mm-hmm. I needed it to rally and it didn't but uh, London did and that is entirely entirely specific to me and not actually about the place which is great um but those are my tips Alison well it's interesting so I agree I want to totally back up I agree with the idea of a year at a job Right. Put it on the resume. When I graduated from university and became a teacher, I immediately did not want to do that. I got offered a high school drama teaching position. I didn't (gasps) want it. I didn't want it because I wanted to be an actress. Right. Mm -hmm. But my dad was like one year. Yeah. You take that. You do your one year and at least it's a year. So I agree with that completely. That being said, if you go, okay, I'm going to start there. I commit to a year here. Obviously, it makes sense if you're going to be at home. Either your keys are save money or like you said, go find a social life. Yeah. If you decide to stay home and save money and like do the year, I would like you to promise yourself an out date. Yeah. Where you make a decision. I don't know if it's Australia or Canada, but if you go, I can't stay here. Also, you're young. And I will say, now is the time to do things because the older you get, the harder it will get, the more commitments you will have. So, not to make any decisions, you make your own decisions, but like, you know, when you're young, that's when it's easy. Change, you adapt. Things are new. So true. Like moving so, country. And yeah, things. that's true. You know, so like, you know, I can say like if I was in your shoes, I'd go the year, save money, and then make my decision, but definitely have an out date. And we're yeah. talking to a doer. This is someone who's already moved and lived in Canada. Yeah, well like able. Someone well who's able. already like able to also look pick at, up and go. Look at the industries. Like you go, I want to go back to Canada. Look, a lot of things have changed after COVID. Like all environments have changed. Yeah. So wherever you... Is, does it make more sense for you with what you do to go to Australia or does it make more sense with what you do to go to Canada? Like research, yeah. figure that out. But like I would say outdate is always a See, I'm a yeah, little bit more. Yeah, and like a nice comfort blanket, I think as well. It's just mm-hmm. like a little bit of reassurance for the bad days. Yeah. I'm a bit more like Pocahontas talking to Grandma Willow and I tried to give you advice based <laughs> off this recently. I'd say follow your heart. You know, wherever the, li- the leaves go, it's just around the river bend. Um, Are those two different Colours of the wind. It's, it's, it's an amalgamation. It's like a montage. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> and uh, I say just book that flight now. Get out to Australia tomorrow. You know, it's just a job. I, I you agree. Different job. Yeah. You go to Australia, you don't like it. Oh, take off. Go to Canada then. I you are young. The only job can... I stayed in for over a year was a cafe. You know, like... Well, can... it's, but it's his dream job. You didn't do, stay there because you were hoping you to get You don't think I enjoyed job. those free sandwiches was a part of my dream? No, but I think this is like he... That was a crayfish sandwich, Catherine, I, with mayonnaise. I think this is his equivalent of comedy. Like, I think you have to imagine that some people enjoy corporate work. Yeah. Yes. So if this is the dream job... Too, do you understand, Helen, what no, I just said? No, not really. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, yeah, but I know, right, they love the job so much. Loves it's the job. It's his dream job. But loneliness breeds depression. Yeah. And to be depressed at your parents' house when all your friends are away somewhere else, like... I agree, too, with the idea of, like, joining clubs or even, hey, I'm going to say this, take a class online. I do think that's a good idea. Anything that fills that time that benefits you. Right? That's what we're doing right Volunteer now. Volunteer for yeah. old people. Talk to them. Be friends with yeah, them. And ours. then you won't feel any awkwardness when you leave after a year because they'll probably die. <laughs> Helen! You won't be leaving behind a friendship group. Do you know what I mean? Because what happens if they make a friendship group and then they get stuck so they feel like, oh, I can't leave this friendship group. If it's the elderly, you're probably fine. You know yeah. what I mean? Or like Helen. That's just the- postcards for a couple of months. <laughs> 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 and they need people to talk to because they're so lonely. I watched I, an yeah. advert. It was you, awful. I sometimes work with Age UK and it's actually yeah. really rewarding. And I don't necessarily think that they'll die, but they do often forget. So I was going to say, Betty's not going to remember if you stop calling. <laughs> she was like, did. also, you know what it is. You work with old people. Like, they want to die. Like, most of them do. They do. Like, you ever speak to them properly? Have you ever realized that you were the common denominator? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my 
god it's not on my watch babe is it because I'm volunteering there that they're like I'm, I'm ready for out <laughs> I'll go now I'll go meet my maker <laughs> Something to think oh! about. <laughs> I'd love if you get to Dignitas in Switzerland. It's like, you know the booths? Or Helen Powell's just through this door. <laughs> <laughs> hello, 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 hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just walk out the window. <laughs> <laughs> hi, 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 hi. <laughs> Do you want to sing a song from the olden days? <laughs> oh, dear God. Do we it's have a long more way to Tipperary. Oh, now it's I want to. Way. H is too close to the edge. Leave him alone. Okay. Um, are you ready oh, for one good luck? Yeah, yeah. Let's do it, please. Fabulous. I love her. Okay. Oh, and let us know what you decide. H. I actually, want to hear that. Yeah, oh, please do. Yeah, I would. Yeah. yeah, and and good for you. You've got lots of options, and you you sound like you'll make the right decision no matter what. I agree. So, yeah. yeah, I really do. Having lots of options, you've already done something very smart because yeah. I think limiting those are when it gets tricky. Yes. yes. Well done. everybody hey here's a question for our listeners yes. where can they find you you have a podcast i and do a have a podcast and a tour yeah tell which us is, about both please. okay so uh wtb women talking bollocks with yeah. maureen younger and jen brister yes. yeah it's great we, we love it it's great um we don't actually talk testicles at any point um <laughs> well you couldn't come on i mean stick to what you know yeah exactly <laughs> exactly uh and then yeah i'm doing uh this is my first time doing a UK tour. Yeah, Woo! it's just a teeny little one. But look, uh, if you have ever seen me and you enjoy me, please do come out. Mm -hmm. um, I think my first one is Newcastle, which sold out. Very nice. exciting. Isn't that Too nice? late, guys. That was very nice. Um, but I will be in Birmingham and yes. Sheffield and Nottingham nice. and Chester and uh, I think Brighton yes. and... I'm going to keep just kind of going along to see, you know, but this is fun. Social media and things like this make it a whole new world for some of us comedians, right? Because not mm. everyone's going to be on radio or TV, but there's a lot of really great comedians out there. And so True. because of social media and podcasting, it changes the lives. So uh, this is why the first time in my whole comedy career, I'm like, okay, I'll do a tour, right? Because I just thought, eh, done well, lots you of have you. Go see, if you haven't seen you. Alison, she's so funny. Strong she's recommend. A brilliant comedian. It's Agreed. just going to so be sweet. like an hour of just pure smiling <laughs> yeah. and just joy and just fun. So if you want a really good night out or you know someone who's having a bit of a shitty time and just needs a good night out, just go see If Alison. you want to say, oh, that's good. <laughs> 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 that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Oh, oh that is good. That is good. <laughs> then you can still girl. be classy. Yeah, yes. yeah. We'll tag Alison in all the posts. If you want to see her socials, just click on them. And thank you so much. Yes, thank, you, thank you, Alison. Thank you for coming. Yeah. Helen. Huge news. Uh, is the executive lounge feeling a little fuller to you today? Is it? Probably, because we've got another exec producer. Ah! Yay! <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to Simon Moores, Guy Goodman, Mary Fox, Annie Tonner, Sarah Deacon, Oliver Jago, Anthony Conway, Matthew Thomas, Madeline Quinn, and our new arrival, Grace O'Reilly. Is that Irish? That's got to be. Surely. Religious first name, I don't know. Hello. Don't mind if we do. Um, hey, thanks so much for joining us, guys, and thank you for all your support. We genuinely couldn't do it without you. How do you say uh, thank you again? In Gerv Mahogat. Gerv Mahogat. Gerv Mahogat. Gerv Mahogat. <laughs> Gerv Mahogat. <laughs> nope. Got further away. But that, thank you. <laughs> thank you. And then also to our producers in the producer lounge, we got Richard Bicknell, L, Richard Bold, Sadie Cashmore, Zoe, Rachel Page, Helen A, Abby Wharf, Luke Bright, Kate. Oh, my God. Do I need glasses? No, we can't do this now. Um, <laughs> Dean Mitchell, Anthony, Sophie Chivers, Kerry Soothe, Carrie Soothy, Sweet, <laughs> Victoria <laughs> Hutchinson. Please, everyone, please, 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 let me let me try. Becky Fox, Tim and Dom, Raya Fink, Cordelia, Amy O'Reardon, Matt Sims, Tristan, Taz, Stephanie Catratia, Charlie A, K. C. Anthony. Tass, who just sent us all again? Wait, are there oh. two Anthonys? Hayley Worf, Worf, Worf. Claire Owen Jones, Harold Van Dyke, which always makes me smile. David Walker, Jess and Nick, Rachel R, Neil Redman, Sarah and Molly, Tina, Lindsay, Graham Marsh, Leah Overend. Overend. There's a joke in that. I'll think about it. <laughs> Liz Fort, like over and yeah, like, it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Something with like an ass, maybe. Or a boat. We'll, uh, we'll work it. I'm sure she's never heard it before and definitely gives us her money so that we'll mock her like she was Leo, in school. Leo, let us know if you've got a good one for us. <laughs> Chloe, Emily G and Gozza. Shut the fuck Who? up. Who? Gozza. Is that like short for Godzilla? No. <laughs> no. 
That can't be. <laughs> no, he's I just got a film out. He's busy. He's not listening to podcasts. But maybe he's he's flush and he wants to spend it on his favorite podcast. Gaza. Okay, is Gaza, are we thinking like a really fun non-binary person or a lad from Essex who's got a nickname from school that they've never got rid of and, and madly into us? themselves as Gaza? Oh yeah, you're right. I'm Gaza. Oh my God. Don't ask why. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so fun. Thank you all so much for supporting the, pod- the podcast. We really couldn't do it without you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank remember you, thank that, you. yes, I struggled with the names today, but that's because um, uh, we're, we've had a break. Yeah. Happy New Year. If you're thinking of ways to spend your money that might help people in the arts, then please support our podcast on Patreon. And also, you can give very little. You can give three quid a month. You can give five quid a month. But there's a whole back catalogue. Why not there get in there? so many extras. We'd love to have you.